Hey everybody, Annie here with a couple of quick announcements. First, I am so excited to announce that we have launched our new online campus. This is a virtual gathering place where we are hosting Q&As, webinars, support groups, and on-demand courses. It is pretty awesome and I hope you will join. If you use the link schoolforthedogs.com slash podcast fan, you can get a month of free access. And we have some pretty cool things happening in the next month there, so I hope you will join once you're on the inside of the online campus. If you post something and mention that you are a podcast fan, I will gift you access to our Body Language Basics course, a $47 value. This is an on-demand course by my School for the Dogs co-founder, Kate Sinisi. Super valuable information. I think you'll get a lot out of it. Second announcement is that the podcast is going on a brief hiatus. I hope to be back in September, but I'm taking a little time off because I am writing a book about dog training. It will be published by Source Books in 2024, and I am trying to finish it up this summer. So I am going to be turning my attention to that for the next couple months, but I will be going live and doing some Q&As uh, in the online campus, so I hope you will come join me there. And I should also mention, if you haven't done my master class, which is free, it's about an hour long, I suggest you check that out if you are jonesing for more <laughs> Annie Grossman while I'm gone. You can get there at anniegrossman.com slash masterclass. It features a special offer where you can get a year of access to the online campus plus a 90-minute session with a School for the Dogs trainer and all of our on-demand courses for a very special price. Uh, and just for doing the masterclass, you also get a 20% discount right now to storeforthedogs.com. So make sure to check that out. And I will see you on the inside or else I will see you back here in September. And oh, wait, third special announcement. I almost forgot. I got a kitten. It's sort of an interesting story. I wrote up how this tiny cat entered our lives earlier this week. You can read all about it in the online campus. Again, join at schoolforthedogs.com slash podcast fan and you'll get a month free. Magnolia, I'm telling everybody about the new kitten. You want to tell them? We got the captain. And what's her name? Uh, Sawa. And where'd she come from? From the beach. And what do you like about her? We love her, and I you we do, and we have something for her. All right, tell everybody they should go to the online campus and they can read all about it. Can you say that? Go to the wine cap to read all about it. So, um, just for background for anyone listening to this, um, <laughs> Michelle and I, I don't know Michelle, but Michelle and I are in the same uh, neighborhood dog group, and she posted something about an issue she was having with her dog, and I said, you know, hey, if you want to do a free consult, um, here's the link, we're doing free consult, right, it's now it's cool for the dogs. And a couple other people recommended uh, another trainer in the neighborhood who I've heard this person's name before, but I don't really um, I don't know much about about them. Um, so I Googled around and saw that this person wasn't certified and by any by, well, by any organization other than this one uh, local dog training trainer program that, I don't think has a very 
good reputation and being aware of the fact that it's like uh, I, I think mo most people don't know that it's not a regulated field and that there are that there's like a lot of different I guess you could say different kinds of dog training some things that could be effective but actually ultimately ultimately don't like address the root cause of the fear da 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 da, da. I reached out and to Michelle I, 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 I really re reached out to you just because I was like, hey, I was wondering how it went with this trainer because I don't know anything about this trainer. And, and I said kind of like a shortened version, I guess, of what I just stated. And and you wrote back like basically like I don't think it's appropriate, you know, for you. I, I don't think you used the word appropriate, but you were just like it's sort of weird that you're like denigrating some other trainer, you know, rather than you know, just promoting your business and leaving it at that. And I realized right away, like you were kind of right. Like I shouldn't have said anything. I really didn't mean to, <laughs> I didn't really mean to like put this guy down because I don't know the person or, or the methods. I, but I was like pushing you to like, tell me like what you did in your session, which was not appropriate. So, and I, like I said to you in the message, like I, I could just call this person and ask about their methods. So I apologize. And I totally understand if I came off like a jerk. <laughs> 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 no, no worries. I, you know, like I said too, it's just been such a stressful week with this guy because, again, like we have so much affection for right. him. We know it's not like we know enough to understand that it's not like an aggression thing. That when he acts out, it's because he's terrified. Um, right, right, and, and so much aggression stems from from fear um right. but anyway so just to back up i said let, let's get on the phone and we can talk about this and maybe maybe it'll be a subject for the podcast but but um tell me what's going on so it sounds like you fostered this dog and now you're watching the dog and is this a new behavior did you see it when you were fostering like take, take me back a little bit yeah of course so when we so we started fostering him um I think we picked him up in February or March. Uh, it was a little bit of an impulse decision, to be honest. Basically, the situation was we saw him, um, and we already have a Chihuahua Pomeranian mix in the house. He's nine and a half. His name is Jungu, and he's an angel. We've never had an issue with him. So we thought that, you know, we were ready to contemplate getting a second dog. So we spoke to this rescue, and we brought... You know, and we were allowed to do a one-week trial, is what the rescue told us. The rescue disclosed that he did have a heart condition, uh, but really no more than that. So when we brought him home, we realized he had a little bit of a fear aggression issue and realized the severity of his condition. He has a level five heart murmur. Um, our dog, Jungu, actually also has, also has degenerative, degenerative heart disease. When we realized all of that, we realized that we were maybe in a little bit over our heads. And so we reached back out and said, hey, we're happy to foster this dog and give him a home until he's adopted out. So we had him for about three months. Ashley, who's now his mother and renamed him Bowzu, adopted him, has had him for about a month. We've stayed in touch the entire time. And she just is on a trip out of the country. And we agreed to watch him because we love him <laughs> i missed him so during that foster period we realized a number of things the first thing is you know jungle's allowed to sleep on the bed so for us it was kind of a no-brainer that we would just put bowser up on the bed he got very territorial up there so we quickly kind of revoked that privilege <laughs> from him uh, and set up a bed for him next to you know where we sleep the the territorial aggression was like if one of us left the bedroom and then came back in at night it would spook him it was like he didn't recognize us he would growl and bark um which has now escalated to uh rushing at whoever like charging at whoever is coming through the door and trying to bite their feet and their calves um and it's not like a warning nip either it's like a rush like a panicked rush and attack until you're able to kind of get away from get yourself away from the situation um he also didn't like being touched at all at night so if i accidentally like my hand like brushed him he would like rush up the bed at me and bit my chest actually the first week that we had him ever 
um, I guess to back up a tiny bit too, sorry, just for his background, he's an eight-year-old Chihuahua Pomeranian mix. He was with a family, I think, out in Queens, and he was rescued when this family was told that he had a heart murmur and wanted to put him down. And the vet said, this is a perfectly, not a perfectly healthy dog, you know, but like his condition can be maintained with medication and he can otherwise live a normal dog life and refused to put him down and surrendered him to the rescue. And so we're working with mm-hmm. eight years of, I'm not sure what kind of treatment. Um, and do, you so, don't know if he had these issues with that family as well? Yeah, we've had no contact with that family. We don't know really anything about his background other than the circumstances of his surrender. So that so there was a territorial issue. Um, there was also, you know, a little bit of just a growling issue generally. He isn't neutered because his prior family decided not to, you know, do that procedure. And because of how far gone his heart condition is now, every vet that we spoke to also, you know, backed up the recommendation that he not be put under anesthesia uh, because they were afraid that he wouldn't be able to survive a surgery due to his heart condition. So he also wears a diaper around the house because he marks everywhere. He, you know, he obviously doesn't like that. So he'll growl when the diaper is being put on. But otherwise, we haven't seen, what we have not seen is we have not seen resource guarding issues. So when I feed him breakfast or dinner, I can sit right next to him. I can put my hand on his water bowl next to his food bowl. I can put my hand on his food bowl and he's fine with that. Um, he also hasn't shown any aggression to Jungwoo or the other dog in our house. Uh, and actually Jungwoo seems to be the only thing in this house that he consistently listens to. When he was here, when we were fostering him, we did some basic obedience training. So we taught him sit, lie down and roll over. So that was the three month foster period. Since he's come back, he just seems to have more triggers to the point where we're just not even sure what is triggering him. So, for example, like, basically his second day here, I was in the bathroom and I walked out to the living room. Bowser was sitting on the couch, looked over, saw me, and started barking and growling like he was about to charge. So I started talking to my boyfriend. I was like, just allow me to not make eye contact with him (laughs) Uh, and just like distract, you know, distract him. That kind of state made him stay where he was and he was just like continued to bark. Uh, But then as soon as I turned my head back to where he was, he jumped off the couch, ran at me and like bit my foot and my calf. He also just, at this point, it's like even movement will trigger him. So in our in-home office setup, we have two desks that are next to each other. Uh, if Nick turns in his chair to talk to me, that will cause Bowser to alert and, like, charge. I, you know, it's, like, at the point where it's, like, standing up will upset him. And we're not sure what's going on. Since he's been here, we tried using a playpen to cut off, like, half of our living room which is a ton of space, by the way. (laughs) It's like, we have a huge living room uh, and like we probably had him confined in like a 200 square foot space, honestly. It's bigger than the first bedroom I had when I first moved to the city, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. He cried the entire time that he was in the playpen and when we let him out, he would charge and attack us every time we would like go to let him out for a walk or for his dinner or water so we stopped that we did that for one day and we were like this is not working uh what we do now is we just have him on leash at all times so that if he charges one of us is able to pick up his leash and we either like try to redirect his attention with the treat and get him to sit which doesn't always work um the trainer we worked with yesterday showed us a method where Rather than saying no or anything, we just walk towards him, actually, calmly, uh, just, like, saying no once, and then just walk towards him and, like, into his space, and that actually seemed to calm him. Uh, But, you know, I'd love to also hear, like, what actually might be going on there, and if there's maybe a better way to handle, uh, because we've tried both the redirect with the treat and, like, the command to just, like, get him to calm down and get him to do his obedience commands and now you know our instructions from yesterday so that's pretty much where we're at at this point nick my boyfriend seems to upset him a lot more than i do 
uh, because Nick has left for the weekend as of today, and he's actually been quite calm. Uh, Bowser has actually been quite calm today. Uh, he's actually on leash and just sleeping on his back, like in cockroach position, next to my desk right now on the floor. So well, sorry that's, to sorry that's, to talk. That's to some good news. That's no, that's, that's that's what I'm here for. So um, a few a few follow up questions. Did the person who had him in this intermediary time tell you how he was doing with her? Uh, yep. So she would keep us updated regularly on his behavior. It sounds like he has not been aggressive with her. She told us there's only been one incident when he bit her. Um, otherwise, though, so she lives in Hell's Kitchen with a roommate who fosters cats. And my understanding is Bowser does not have a good relationship with the roommate. So she generally tries to keep Bowser in the room away from her. And the one time that he bit her was when Bowser was in the kitchen having his dinner or breakfast. Hi! Sorry. Hello! Having his dinner or breakfast or something. And the roommate was in the living room, like, came out to the living room, and Bowser tried to charge her, and Ashley put herself between Bowser and the roommate. And uh, that's, like, when he charged and bit her. But otherwise, it sounds like she hasn't had any biting incidents with him. Um, and, I mean, she's been doing an amazing job. Uh, like, she's she's conditioned him to, you know, allow um, to allow her to do some things that we still, like, weren't able to handle. Like, he would not let us touch his butt <laughs> when we were fostering him, which was unfortunate because, like, his poop, like, took a little bit to get solid. So we really needed to get at his butt to wipe it. And he did not like that. And he would growl and, like, bite us when we would try to you know take care of that issue and uh she was able to handle that so you know he's made he's definitely made progress with her for sure and you know i i wonder if like some of the stress he's feeling is simply because of the change in location again and hoping you know we're hoping that he'll be better once he goes back to ashley but uh but yeah okay so my immediate my immediate thoughts from from what you're telling me um is oh sorry one no, more go ahead thing. Sorry, uh -huh. sorry one more one more super critical thing uh -huh. actually is that he's really affectionate and he'll ask for pets but then he'll just randomly freak out when he is uh when he's being pet with no warning so he doesn't <sighs> give like there's no wailing there's no lip curl there's nothing uh it just like goes straight to like having like a demon in your lap <laughs> so it, it's really sad because I want to pet him and I want to give him affection, but like the last time that I sat on the floor, I sat on the floor, didn't look at him and let him crawl into my lap and then placed my hand in front of his face and let him nose my hand to let me know that he wanted pets. And then I would pet him for like five second intervals and then stop. But then after the second interval, he freaked out and I have a cut on my side <laughs> from where he bit me. So he gives very little warning. What, you know, like what Mike said to us yesterday was like in the past it must be that, uh, you know, people have disrespected over and over his other signals. So he's decided that the only way to get people to stop something that he doesn't like is to go straight to biting. So that's what so that's what he does. And he wasn't like that when, you know, we were fostering. But uh, but since we've gotten back, like every time that I've gone over to pet his head or something. I haven't been able to do so without like almost every time I guarantee he's like freaked out, you know, yeah. after maybe like five or 10 seconds of being pet in terms of a full like medical thing. Ashley took him to the vet, did a full workup. Uh, he's a healthy dog other than of course the heart murmur. He did have a loose tooth that she said fell out. So, um, so I'm not sure what's going on there. So maybe like the, if like there's an abscess in there or there's like still pain maybe that's contributing to why it doesn't like yeah it. so i was gonna say that that yeah. um i would definitely first rule out any kind of um medical reason um that he might be behaving this way he might be in pain but of course you know one of the things that's so difficult about uh being a veterinarian is you can't speak to your patients uh right. so you know, it's possible that sometimes the first medication that 
a veterinary behaviorist will recommend as a pain medication to address pain that we, we might not know the exact source of it. But, um, you know, what you're describing to me as a non-medical professional <laughs> sounds like it could be related to pain. And, uh, and I'm guessing, you know, the stress of maybe the stress of living with a cat or having whatever feelings he has about the roommate, um, the stress of being moved from one place to another, you know, if only, if only there was a little old lady out in the country who could live alone with every, <laughs> yeah. every dog who, uh, for, you know, who needed that. Or it doesn't have to be an old lady, but you know what I mean. <laughs> the perfect situation. Like somebody retired. You can like, be with him 24 7. Yeah, out in like a remote area yes. where there are none of the stressors of daily city life and roommates, et cetera. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they're not. And uh, so I think it's commendable that you and she are doing your best to figure out these issues. Um, I would suggest checking out. Um, we, we have a body language course that's just like an on-demand course, uh, and I can send you some other information, too. If you go to schoolforthedogs.com slash courses, I, I maybe would just do that. It's a pretty quick course, but I think that could help you maybe read some dog body language that you might not be aware of already, because it's true that dogs do tend to give us signals they are going to bite but sometimes they can be things that aren't super obvious unless you've really sort of studied it a little bit it might help you sort of learn how to read him a little bit better but it's true that you know he might go from what seems like nothing to snapping um and you know the kind of thing like getting into a space and yelling no if that is actually something that is aversive to him and who knows which part is aversive is it the what was the word is it the approaching is it the fact that you're not you know then leaving um you know one of the fallout the fallouts of that kind of work in my opinion is that uh you can end up with a dog who's like oh i shouldn't bark and growl i should just go in for the bite right Um, which it sounds like it's kind of like what that other trainer was, was getting at. So, you know, there, there's actually a school of thought of like, you actually want to encourage the growl. Like you want a dog who <laughs> growls, um, even though that can seem counterintuitive. For the moment right now, I know you said you have to watch this dog through Sunday and you're really at your wits end. Uh, so that's really what I want to focus on helping you with because yes. we have we have a few dozen hours before we get to Sunday at this point and <laughs> I don't want you suffering. Um, I think our focus is just um, I don't want to make this dog worse. Yeah. I don't want to like create any mm-hmm. worse habits of course for him. and you um, want to and you want to also be safe you want to you want both of you to be comfortable my, <laughs> I, my other follow-up question yes. was um what what is he eating and is he eating well oh and, and just an addendum to the tooth thing if he had one tooth fall out was it treated <laughs> was it did a dentist look at it after it fell out uh, I don't believe so. Um, yeah, so I I, I would say probably a visit to the dog dentist is in order. If he had one f- tooth yeah. fell out, probably there are other ones that are on their way. And I head. and I don't know very much about dentistry of any kind, but I yeah. th- but my guess and again just just a guess is that like mm-hmm. if a tooth just falls out on its own, that might mean that there's like pain and rot under it that yeah. c- might need to be cleaned and dealt with and. I mean, obviously, we all know that dental pain is no joke. And for humans, <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, but is he eating? And what is he eating? And is how often is he eating? Like, and is he using a crate? Um. So, uh, so I'll do the eating question first. Um. So he eats twice a day with Jangu. They both eat this at the same time. So Jangu's on pet plate, and Bowser is on just food for dogs. He's either on turkey and whole wheat macaroni or chicken and white rice. And both of those recipes have been signed off on by the vet for being low sodium and healthy enough for a dog with his condition. He also takes a bunch of medications. He takes vetmidine, furosemide, sil- sildenafil, and one more, sildenafil, furosemide. And I can't remember the and last one. And what are the, these are for his heart? 
yes, those are all to manage his heart condition. He has no problem taking those pills if we mix them into the Just Food for Dogs food. What I'm trying to ascertain is, like, is he, he's yeah. into the food, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep, he's super into the food. They also both get a greenie after dinner, and he's also had no problem chewing on that. He's still able to kind of chew on something hard like that as well. In terms of treats, uh, he's just picky, I think. Like, Jenggu gets chicken heart, turkey heart, like, lamb liver, lamb lung, all that stuff. So that's what Bowser eats for training treats as well. And he's into them. Yeah, 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 like, super into them, yeah. Okay. Um, my, my, for the next, and, and, and sorry, does he use a crate? Oh, sorry, um, we don't have a crate, so we do not, and the playpen just, like, uh, he didn't like that, yeah. upset him, yeah, a lot. And he doesn't so. use a crate with, uh, the person who has him now? No. Okay. Yeah, so, for the most, uh, immediate, uh, <laughs> issues, I mean, overall, too, but specifically right now, I think the focus should be on enra- arranging the environment in order to make sure that um, he is agitated as little as possible and that um, you are as safe as possible. So, And the fact that your boyfriend is out of town and he seems to be less stressed about you than the boyfriend is probably a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um I would even go so far as to say if if he seems less stressed. Does he seem less stressed or more stressed, you think, when around the other dog? Uh, around Jango, um, he he and Jango... Well, Jango is annoyed, more annoyed by him than Than okay. <laughs> the, like, um, the other way around. I, I think you're... Bowser kind of likes to follow Jango around the apartment and mm-hmm. will, like, lick his dick. Sorry, I don't... <laughs> That's like, he, he just, like, follows him around, licks his dick... Like, does everything he does. It's kind of really cute. Like, when before we put him on leash at all times, like, he and Jungle would just run around side by side because Bowser just wants to do everything that he was doing. So Yeah, I think your instinct to make the apartment as small as possible for him is actually a really good one. Um, yeah. I, you might just need to be putting yourself in that area, too. Um, yeah. But... You know, not unlike anxious people, I think, you know, anxious dogs appreciate having a manageable environment that is, um, you know, as predictable as possible. Um, right. So if you can create a space that's uh, also ideally away from the front door, ideally away from, you know, any noisy windows, um, that is maybe like a, an apartment within an apartment that you can hang out in for the next few days, that could be a good idea. Overall, yeah. I think your focus should be on helping him feel as comfortable as possible we need to be focusing on his feelings before we're focusing on the behavior and i think i mean to get back a little bit to like what we were talking about before i think a big divide in the world of dog training today Mm -hmm. yeah uh is approaching the problem versus approaching the root of the problem because there's a lot of things you can do using punishment and punishment is not by the way like a big bad scary thing or or like there's not i'm not even saying punishment with like a judgment value to it like punishment simply means we're reducing a behavior reinforcement means we're encouraging a behavior so there are ways you can reduce a behavior you know using some kind of punishment that might get rid of the behavior but the that you it can then lead to increased undesirable behaviors in some other area of the dog's like it's life just, he's trying to hide his feelings and like, or like you know he's like okay well i like i said like barking is bad so now i'm just gonna yeah. go straight to biting or yeah. um you know scratching at the door got punished but you know biting myself is a way that i can express that anxious energy <laughs> um <laughs> or or it can lead to fallout of like Let's say yelling is something he doesn't like. I mean, a lot of dogs, I'm not sure they even care if they get yelled at, but let's say he's like, doesn't like being yelled at, you know, that person yelled at me, that person must be a bad person. Whereas like they started out being, you started out yelling because of they were barking at the noise in the hall. And now they're like, oh, I better bark at this person who always yells at me. So 
I'm always talking about how, how we need to be thinking basically about two, two types of conditioning or two types of learning, the, the learning by consequence, which is what we generally think of with dog training. Like if you do this, then this is going to happen. If you do X, then Y is going to happen. Um, you know, if you sit, then you get a treat. If you bark, I'm going to yell no. Like all, like the if thens uh, that we're doing to control their behavior. And that's like basically traditional dog training. I mean, and it's dog training that we do at school for dogs, right? Like, um, any, anything that falls under the, what's generally known as obedience. But then there's the much more basic kind of learning, which is learning how to feel about something. Um, so, you know, the example I always think of is like, my daughter goes to school, she comes back with a drawing, you know, I could look at it with my eyes closed and tell her how amazing it is because I'm not like, <laughs> I'm not, I, I don't really care about the drawing at this point. I just want her to feel good about having gone to school and done this thing, da, 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 da. And we have plenty of time to then like build on that, you know, to, to the point of, you know, me being able to critique her work. I would say he is at the point of like, you just want him to be like, it was just an amazing time being with Michelle, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and was he a jerk the whole time? Yeah, maybe. But I think, I think like we, we can't even, um, we can't even ask for, uh, behaviors from him yet because he's, yeah. he's just like not in a mental space so for fearful. it. Now, does that mean he can't learn anything? No, I think he can learn something, but I think what we uh, want him to learn before we think it is less about like doing X, Y, or Z and more that just like, oh my God, being at Michelle's is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, because I think if you can get him feeling good about all the things, the, the, the behaviors we don't like are mm -hmm. going to, uh, a lot of them will, might just go away on their own because like you said they're most of them are probably stemming from fear um yeah. but those that don't go away on their own we i think will have um a better ability to work with changing those behaviors um because he just won't be so stressed out and um and you know i i think one nice thing about you know, what's called reward-based training or positive reinforcement training is like, even if you're not doing the best job at, of it, like even if your timing's not great or whatever, mm -hmm. like you're still basically giving your dog good stuff and yeah. that is building their trust. Um, yeah. And aren't we lucky as dog owners in that, like we control all this stuff, <laughs> like we control yeah. where they sleep and what they eat and where they spend their time and who they spend their time with. And, and, um, the fact that we have so much control over all of those inputs um, means that we can um, do a lot to control their behavior. So that's why I was saying, like, let's figure out how you can literally set up your environment to be as controlled as possible. Um, yeah. Because when there are fewer variables, uh, you are going to have more control over all the variables. So um, I would suggest and and. I mean, on the plus side, this is going to be easy to do. On the downside, mm -hmm. it might sound crazy, and you might be like, I was on the phone with this woman, and she remember I met. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know that's that what it might sound like. But no, no, I would suggest, no. like, taking his food, and yeah. it's wet food, right? Yes. Okay. I would, like, I, I would find a whole bunch of treats that he likes and the food that he likes. Like, figure out what is, like, the rest of his diet for today friday mm -hmm. and make it into like the smallest pieces that you can deliver to him now it, i know like wet food it, it's going to be a little bit yucky i guess it, it maybe like put it on a spoon um mm -hmm. but i would uh just figure out like how far you can um get to him without him mm -hmm. reacting and like how far you can get with like while he's being comfortable uh, yeah. and like spend the rest of the day just like going mm -hmm. up to him and giving him the, the treats and the food just, and you could yeah. set a timer, um, or whatever else. Um, and I would have your criteria, like the criteria that you're looking for be basically nothing. And if he does go into like crazy headspace, I would also have a reserve of like a, a big bowl of whatever mm -hmm. his treats are that he really likes. And yes. uh, you're just going to like throw them on the ground. And that's the thing that I know is going to sound a little crazy. Like my dog is barking like a jerk and I'm just supposed to like dump treats on the ground. And, uh, and you know, when I first started 
when I first got into dog training, I was in a program where I was paired with a mentor in upstate New York, and there was like two other people there, and one of them had like a big Rottweiler type dog <laughs> with them, and the big Rottweiler type dog like went after this like smaller dog that was there, yeah. and this like senior trainer just took the dog the big dog's head and like shoved it into a huge bowl of food and i was like (laughs) i was like well that makes no sense that's crazy like what have i gotten myself into here like here like this is the person i'm supposed to be learning from now i understand it differently than what it seemed like at the time as what you're doing is changing the association and that doesn't mean you aren't all i mean like dogs are always learning by consequence and always learning by association it's i mean it's not like one is happening and then the other is happening and one is happening and the other is happening like just right. and when you if you break down your own behavior enough you start to see like oh i'm also always learning by association consequence too like you know it's just sometimes it's the consequences or the associations are minor enough that you're not like perceiving them um but if you can change the way he's feeling in that moment first of all you're stopping the behavior in kind of a clever way because he's not Uh barking anymore if he has his mouth full of chicken hearts or whatever um second of all he's learning oh my god like that you know whatever the the trigger was you know someone standing up um equaled equals treats right equals a huge amount of yummy stuff on the ground and so actually when people stand up it's not such a bad thing and um i mean what's what's uh, a little bit tricky is it sounds like there's a lot of triggers that you're dealing with and that they're not necessarily that obvious at all times. And, um, and also he might, we're not ruling out the fact that he might be in pain, which might make him much more sensitive to certain triggers at certain moments. But, uh, like I said, the good news is it's an easy enough thing to do or you don't have to be uh, worried about like, oh, did I do that right? Because you really can't do it wrong if while you're doing it's throwing treats at your dog. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my um, sort of big picture advice. Now, I would also, um, so like in summary, I would say check out the Body Language Basics course and I can send you some other information as well. Um uh, divide up his food and figure out how you can give it in bits and pieces just throughout the day. And, um, and, and actually I forgot that you have a second dog. I mean, I would be doing it to both dogs and I would probably yeah. give it to both dogs at a distance from each other. Just, um, you said resource guarding isn't an issue and that's good news, but just to make sure that that's continues to uh, not be an issue. Um, yeah, they do this really cute thing after they eat. Sorry, this is not that relevant, but they, I like cute things. <laughs> they do this cute thing because they have two separate feeding areas in the kitchen. So they have their own mats and bowls and everything. And then when they're done eating, they'll like cross each other. They'll, just, <laughs> they'll stop eating at the same time. And then they will like cross across each other and then like go finish up each other's leftovers. <laughs> and, like, <they're, laughs> Like, neither of them seem to mind or have an issue with it. And as long as Jung was not accidentally, like, ingesting heart medication he shouldn't be having, it's kind of like, whatever. <laughs> if, like, if you think that's necessary. Yeah, good. Well, let, you know, your other dog is going to benefit from it, too. And um, a couple days of, of extra treats probably won't harm him. Um, yeah. And uh, you're nearby. So if you want to go by our <laughs> store, for the, I mean, school for the dogs, we have a little store there with lots of awesome treats. That's where I get all of our, uh, that's where we've gotten all of our treats, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah well, there yeah, you yeah. go. And, um, uh, Jungle has, like, every, every puzzle. I, my, um, my boyfriend's mom came by and was like, it looks like a baby living here. <laughs> yeah, like, a toy box and, like, seven enrichment puzzles. <laughs> yeah, we have these two, we have, uh, like, three big IKEA bins in our kitchen and yeah. one is for one is for soft babe soft kid toys one is for hard kid toys and one is for the dog and 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 our, our cleaning person is always putting the dog toys with the kid toys and i just today i was like, <laughs> You're like hey, wait wait wrong wrong bin <laughs> i will say Jungle is uh the enrichment puzzles are great for Jungle because he'll just pass out like he'll have the zoomies and we'll yeah, do it yeah yeah 
pass out on the couch. It has made him a much better counter surfer, which I don't know how mm. I feel about it. It's, it's like taught him how to like open pockets, and like <laughs> get containers open. I'm like, you don't need to. It's fine because he he can only jump so high. That's really you know, funny. But... My my old dog Amos was very. Uh very good at puzzle toys and and it and definitely it improved his ability to figure things out and there were plenty of times where i'd like have my backpack or some kind of bag on the ground that would have like yeah. some old dog treat or my treat pouch or something in it and i could see him trying to like figure out how to work the zipper <laughs> <laughs> yep exactly it's like that's not that's not why i'm that's not why i'm teaching you he managed to get like sorry we're off topic but it's okay it's, it's all interesting um, to me <laughs> there's this brief like i remember there was a briefcase and like in it was one of those briefcases with two pockets too on the outside with little flaps with the magnet closes and there was a cookie that was inside of a wrapper inside of one of those plastic wrappers that you like is taped closed and you like open it um Anyway, so all of that was on top of a bookcase, and he jumped up on top of an ottoman onto the trash can and then onto the bookcase <laughs> to get this briefcase, knocked it onto the floor, somehow opened the flap, and then ate the entire sugar cookie. Oh, my God. Like, panicked, took him to the vet, whatever. He was fine. Didn't even have diarrhea or anything, but I was like, I, this is not this is not what you're have you tried the for. Have you tried toys with Bowser? I have. Um, he's not. He's not nearly as clever, and he like he gives up pretty easily. <laughs> so have you have you done a hand touch with Bowser? Have you taught that? What is a hand touch? So I think I mean, if you have if you have time over the next few days, I think that would be a really yeah. great thing to work on with him. Mm -hmm. um, it's just you know a simple exercise where what you're going to do is hold out your hand to him. Uh, would, and it could be, you know, or it could be the end of a pencil, it could be a, a wooden spoon, whatever. I mean, if you're worried about having your hand near his face. Mm -hmm. um, and the second that he touches the end of the your hand or the stick or whatever, you're going to say mm -hmm. yes and then bring a treat out uh, from your pocket or wherever. It's important to not have the treat visible um mm -hmm. until after you say your word yes um actually if you're working with two dogs you could even have your fingers out or your hands out and have and reward them at the same touching it for the same time that can be sometimes a way to introduce two dogs i i found uh uh i mean not not dogs with issues i wouldn't say but two puppies or whatever you could have yes. them both touch the same object um and that could just be a really like a really easy thing that you could do to help build up his confidence. I'm a big believer in training things uh, that might seem pointless, but solely for the reason that um, it's it's a way to build up a dog's vocabulary. Yeah. Um, and something like the hand touch or, or a targeting, we sometimes call it, it's just such a building block behavior because once you have a dog who knows how, like, oh, you know, when I touch my nose to her hand, some good thing happens, you know, your, the, the, your, your dog is just kind of at a later level of that, right? Like when right. I touch the thing with my nose and knock it open and pull this open and da, 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 good things happens. But the starting point, <laughs> the starting point is just that hand touch. And it's also creating good associations with you. It's creating right. good association with hands, which could be, could very well be an issue. Um, it can also be used ultimately uh, to help teach some sort of opt-in behavior, which for yeah. the kinds of issues that you're talking about with him, sensitivity to handling um, mm -hmm. can be really helpful, you know, so he could learn, you know, I'm going to um, touch your hand uh, in order to indicate that uh, I'm feeling okay enough for you to, you know, pick up my paw and look at my paw or whatever. Yeah. Um, um, that kind of... Uh, consent work is um is something that i think uh can be really valuable uh, i really think that a hand touch if you if you never teach any other thing to a dog it's it could be useful for a lot of things it's also a way to teach come um mm -hmm. where you know he he could start it like i always say like in the beginning he might only be coming an inch but it's still it's still a start and you could build up on that to him coming and touching your hand across the room um i have i've done at least one podcast episode on teaching touch that kind of breaks it down um i'll share it with you i also did one uh which i reposted last week uh i think it was on um how to teach uh a look which is kind yeah. of similar in that it's a very easy thing to uh teach and it's a very it's a way that you can be very generous 
that you're like you're you are picking a criterion you know the eventually you know i want i'm going to wait for you to touch my finger i'm going to wait for you to touch my eyes but you're setting you're setting the bar so i mean not touch my eyes you know what i mean look at my eyes yeah kind of eye to eye touch um but you're setting the bar so low that they're really going to um get it right and at this point um with the kind of uh you know, anxiety that I think you're, you're dealing with with this dog. We, we don't want to be setting him up for anything that could be, um, you know, hard. Yeah. So, um, so a couple of follow up questions. Sure. Uh, so the first thing is, is it so when he freaks out, it's always very directed um, at a person. So it's never like a generalized, I will like kill anyone who comes near me right now. It's always like that person. I don't like them and I don't like what they're doing. So when we're throwing treats, is it important that the person being barked at is the person to throw the treats or is it okay if like he sees Nick and freaks out, Nick like happens to not have treats because he was like walking from the kitchen to the bedroom or something. Is it okay that I'm the one to throw the treats or would that become an association where it's like, oh good, like she wants me to bark at him rather than like, oh, when Nick nick is like an okay person i think ideally if he's barking at nick it should be nick but yeah yeah, i don't know keep it simple stupid you know like just like whatever works (laughs) just to get the treats yeah yeah yeah. i mean i even like i like to use a um again are you are you i mean are you rewarding the behavior of him barking like i said both things are happening at the same time so you could you could uh, you could say uh, you're rewarding it, but ultimately, if he is not fearful, he, the behavior is not going to happen. I mean, the behavior—he's probably barking in order to get the person to go away, right? Um, and if he does, but if you lose the desire to have someone go away, then there's not a reason to be barking. Um, I mean, I—I I don't know. He—he he might be scared of it. I don't know, but I love actually using remote treat dispensers. I have a treat and train. Uh, that I use all the time with with my dog, um, yeah. and in that case, I'll trigger it. Like for instance, it, it's just like a little thing that sits on the floor that spits out treat with the remote. Um, I trigger it whenever someone's at the door. Now that doesn't like. Am I giving the treats? No. Is the person at the door giving the treats? No. But treats are happening, and it's happening in a spot in my home where she's not like at the door, and. Right. Uh, it's a way for me to help make the association of like, you know, at the door, good da 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 da. Right. If I don't, I don't, you know, I I haven't met this dog though, and you know, I only know you from this conversation, so I don't know how stressed he is. He might be too stressed to eat. Like my dog, yeah. my dog uh, with a very little amount of stress will be uninterested in pretty much any food, uh-huh. um, which you know makes things harder if he is but it sounds like he is able to eat even when he's agitated now um food is not the be all and end all i mean it's also really important that we you know i that we're keeping him under threshold whenever possible which is why i was like yay that your boyfriend's out of town yay for like the making the area um smaller I mean, I'm not I'm not suggesting like wait for him to go bananas and then toss food at him. I'm right. suggesting more like toss food all the time. Um, yeah. Toss food before he's going bananas. Right. Um, <clears throat> if he but if he does get out of control, that certainly is one way to manage it, um, and also a way to you know keep you safe. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, for sure. So. Uh, I was going to say, uh, he, like, he does, he's much calmer around me, and I also have been, like, every time I come around the corner, and he has been calm, and he hasn't, like, gone ape shit, uh, I've given him a treat. I've been like, that's great, like, that's good behavior. Yes, thank you for doing that. So, it's, it's, like, it's cool to see that, like, what you're saying is something that I feel like we haven't, that hasn't been, like, the intention or, like, the thought process we've been doing, but, like, it's been working. Um, well, you know, I, I like to tell people, you know, you know more about animal training than you think you do because you are an animal who's behaving all the time. Yeah. Uh, and he's an animal who's behaving all the time, and, you know, the, the you know, behavioral science is not species-specific. I think, I think a big shift that I know happened 
for me, as I learned about dog training, was thinking about focus focusing on the associations before focusing on the behavior. So, like, I, the only edit I would make to what you just said is... Yeah. Like, maybe keep treats in the bathroom, and as you come around the corner, just throw treats on the ground. Rather yeah. than, okay. like, wait so that you're, be- ra- wait, rather than waiting to see if he's going to be good or not. Um, yeah. Because then he's just going to be like, oh, it's great. Every time she comes around the corner, I get treats. You know, it's, it's fine when she, I mean, and you're not always going to have to have treats. That's the thing. Yeah. Other thing. It's like, that where, where, you know, eventually, which, you know, could be sooner rather than later. Yeah, you you forgot to put treats in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. He's still going to be like he's going to give you he's going to give you one or two or yeah. three or five. Um right. because he's going to he's going to learn that it's um you know that it's no big deal. Yeah. Um, um so I guess the other question I had is as much as I would like to write like for from my approach since last night has just been his leash is on my wrist at all times including when I'm sleeping. <laughs> um and uh the like the i have had to leash him to the desk a couple of times and when i do he cries so um do we ignore him when he does that or do we because like when he's crying we're not trying to approach him we're just trying to like get something done first Mm -hmm. so i guess like what's the correct approach when he's clearly distressed that he's been you know left alone uh, so like you're, you're having to strap him to the desk so that you can go somewhere else and you don't want him to be like charging you and biting you out of nowhere. Is that the idea? Uh, no, it's just that like, I don't, I don't know, like if I'm like in the shower or something, I mm-hmm. don't want him in the bathroom with me okay. <laughs> or like if I have mm-hmm. to go out and run an errand, like I've canceled all my plans for the weekend so no. I can just be yeah. home. Yeah. Um, I would say give him the good stuff, you know, again, yeah. like pack pack a a kong or whatever full of his food you know smear some peanut butter into something um i like the topple actually as an alternative to the kong Mm -hmm. um if i don't know if you've you know what those are they look kind of like rubber uh like upside down thimbles we have them in the shop um t-o-p-p-l yeah i would just like you know, give him something really good to tide him over while you are going to be doing whatever it is you need to do. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's too, I I mean, I don't think you have to like crate train a dog or train a dog to go in a bag, but if I was going to say, if he was comfortable in a bag, you could even like put him in a bag and bring him with you while you need to do whatever. Um, but, um, but yeah, again, just, you know, my, my, my big picture suggestion is to like, think about how, think about the associations he's making and how he, and how, um, those associations might be leading him to feel one way or the other. And then think about how you can change those, yes. that association, um, in order to, um, in order to, you know, affect behavior change. Um, right. which like I said, m- take, takes a bit of a deep breath sometimes because there might be moments when you're like, I feel like I'm rewarding a bad behavior here, but you just have right. to have faith in, in like the, the long term, the long term, which might be short term, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It might, it might, it might, it might be, it might be a quick change. I heard from Michelle the day after we recorded this and she wrote we've had zero incidents since yesterday morning by the way his leash is just on my wrist at all times and he seems way calmer and happier than i think i've ever seen him i pass down a treat to him every half hour or so to reward him for being quiet and calm all right folks see you in september or else see you in the online campus you can get there at schoolforthedogs.com slash online campus i am going to go play with my kitten now bye one of my favorite things to do with dogs is to watch them figure out how to problem solve i like watching them figure out how to 
navigate the world that we're asking them to live in and to have fun while doing it. At School for the Dogs, we specialize in selling enrichment toys for dogs. These are also sometimes called work to eat toys. They can help a dog refine their problem solving abilities, can help them burn off physical and mental energy in a way that is not destructive. It can help slow down their eating and it can also just help them enjoy themselves. I kind of think puzzle toys might be the canine equivalent of playing Fortnite or doing the crossword. School for the Dogs' new Brainy Box is a monthly subscription box where every month we will send you one of our favorite canine enrichment toys along with one of our favorite types of treats. You will only receive things that have been vigorously tested by our staff and student body. Sign up today at schoolforthedogs.com slash Brainy Box. For a limited time, you can get 15% off your first month or your payment for the full first year when you use the code BRAINYBOX15.